Hello, uh, welcome to my kitchen. This is uh, the kitchen in my family home. I was never ever intending on doing anything like this when we first bought this house. Uh, so as you can see, it is just a kitchen. It's quite a nice kitchen, I think that's partly why I like it so much. It's really functional. Actually, hopefully it's gonna work really well for what I'm about to do. Um, what I am about to do is to sort of hopefully offer some inspiration, some help, whatever, whatever I can food wise and helping people be able to cook when they probably haven't got the ingredients that they would uh, be used to cooking with or find easy to get or whatever. So today I'm going to make the most delicious pizza uh, the twist is I'm going to make it with the ingredients that I have. Uh, I, as most people would, have not been in the position to fully stock their, um, their pantries, their cupboards, their dryer stores, their fridges before all this happened. Um, and so I'm hopefully going to give you some tips and some pointers on how you might be able to improvise uh, with whatever you've got in your kitchen cupboard. So that's why I thought I'd choose a simple thing. So um, this is about me learning because I'm not that used to being in front of a camera. So hopefully um, I will get better possibly or hopefully more entertaining and um, you can follow me on my journey through this uh, lockdown period um, where I am having to feed my children uh, and not having to feed my wife, but my wife will be eating the food as well. The journey that we'll be going on is, is kind of a realization that cooking is really actually very easy. A lot of people think it's a dark art. It's not at all. It's about um, sort of realizing uh, what food tastes good with what, um, it's all about flavours and um, there's some technical stuff behind it and that's kind of the bits that I'm hoping to show you. So today I'm going to make a pizza. I have no yeast and I have very little flour. I've got a couple of different flours that I've had left over from uh, different making different uh, dishes. So I think I've got some self-raising flour, um, I've got some buckwheat flour, uh, I have no yeast, um, I've got a little, some, a little bit of oil, I've got some tomatoes uh, and I've got some cheddar cheese. So it's just about improvisation. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to start my tomato sauce, which is the uh, base ingredient that we'll be using. And we need to start, we would start this first because um, we would need that to cool down slightly. So I've got, got myself a brown onion, probably not the best quality onion you've ever seen, but it's an onion no, no less, and um, it's gonna serve me well. So I like to work as neatly as I possibly can. Uh, my wife would probably disagree with me when I say that. So um, I like to keep a little bowl beside me and just put all the uh, rubbish in it. So I cut the onion in half first, and then I will peel it. I find this the easiest way to peel onions, otherwise you can just mess about uh, peeling them. You end up with onion hands, which nobody wants. There's nothing more disgusting than having smelly onion hands. Um, and then, so to dice an onion, uh, we, I will slide, I'll take it, cut it like that, about half a centimetre apart. Uh, with a nice sharp knife, that's the key to all cooking, is a really sharp knife. And then just simply cut it like that, and then it's uh, pretty much diced itself. I'm not going to waste anything at all because food is fairly, I wouldn't say sparse at the moment, but um, we shouldn't be wasting food anyway, the best of times, even when we're going through it, normal times. So, speed that up a little bit. I like to, or as a chef's trick, um, we will always run the knife along our knuckles. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I might have to do another demonstration later on about uh, dicing food, dicing food, dicing onions and carrots and all that sort of stuff. Um, so there we go. Whoops. So I've diced onions. I 
I've probably got more than I want or need, but I'm still, like I just said, I'm not wasting any food at the moment. Uh, not, not just at the moment, but so I'm going to use all of these. Um, okay, so I'll just move that off. Uh, I've got a nice saucepan here. As you can see, I've got nothing fancy. I'm not, as I said before, I'm not, um, I'm not set up to do cooking demonstrations. Uh, so this is all the um, the equipment that I have in this house. So hopefully it just shows to you that um, you know you don't need anything fancy, and cooking, as I said, really isn't too difficult. So I've got this saucepan on quite a high heat. I'm trying to heat it up. I've got, I've got this is uh, olive oil. Um, if you haven't got any olive oil, uh, you could use vegetable oil, rapeseed oil, whatever, canola oil. Um, and I'm just going to put probably a tablespoon in this saucepan uh, and wait till that heats up a little. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to put some um, garlic in there as well. I love garlic, so I'm probably I'm going to put three cloves. The way to best way to peel garlic, I don't know if you can see me on this camera, is um, just give it a little twist, and it pretty much the the skin just falls off. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can either, you can do that, or you can get it on the corner of your bench of your chopping board. Whenever you're using garlic, always use the corner of your chopping board because garlic taints chopping boards really badly. Um, and I mean by that, if you're chopping celery or anything like that on a spot where you've been chopping your garlic, it's just going to taste like garlic and that can be okay depending on what dish you're doing um, but more often than not it's not really a flavor that you want so anyway I've got this garlic clove this is just another way of doing it. so I put my knife flat down on it give it a bang with the heel of my knife and then the skin just comes straight off the only thing with garlic is as it taints your chopping board it also taints your hands so I like to give my hands a quick a really quick a wash, well, uh, as soon as I've done that, sorry, I've got my back to you now. Um, there you go. Now that saucepan should be well and truly hot enough now. So I'm going to really carefully just pop those onions in. Um, you can hear them sizzling. You always want to pan to be reasonably warm when you're cooking things like onions. You don't want to start it off. <clears throat> in a cold saucepan because <clears throat> that way your onions will pretty much stew um, and they won't, it won't, what you need is heat, heat to bring out the sugars in the onion and then to seal them. So that way they'll stay nice uh, and almost kind of naturally caramelize a bit. So this is going to take a while, while that's cooking, I am just going to wipe the bench down a little bit. Nice, a little clean. Uh, should probably be telling you a little anecdote about something. And as as uh, as my, funny when you're stuck in front of a camera for the first time, all your anecdotes go out the window. I've got a few a few crackers, but uh, I'll, I'll share them with you. Anyway, so that's walking away. I'm just slicing this garlic now, um, and then just as fine as I can, um, <clears throat> remaining so, so that I've, you know, I don't want to be looking like I'm going to chop my fingers off or anything. So I, um, yeah, that's definitely something I would recommend against chopping your fingers off. It's not going to help anyone out. So I'm just running the knife over this garlic now. The reason that I'm not putting the garlic in with the um, onions is because garlic will cook, them, cook much faster than onion, so that would burn. Um, I wish I'd stop saying um. I know it's probably winding everyone up. So 
I'm just going to disappear off camera for a second as I open the door because we have a super, 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 super sensitive smoke alarm and uh, I'm always setting it on. I like to put things with a, 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 lot of, a lot hotter than most people probably would at home. I'm a chef, that's what we do. We're always in a bit of a hurry. And boy, that thing's noisy when it goes off and it's a real pain in the behind. So I'm just gonna give the bench a wipe down a bit more. The next ingredient I'm gonna put in here is the main ingredient, which is the tin tomatoes. Now I've got chopped tomatoes. If you've got <clears throat> whole tomatoes, that's fine as well. Even if you've got fresh tomatoes, even better. Uh, I haven't at the moment. I haven't been able to get any. Um, so I'm resorting to these, which are, which are just, you know, probably what I'd use anyway. But if you've got fresh tomatoes, I would just dice them. The only difference is they're going to take a little bit longer to cook down. And by that, I just mean to reduce and soften up. Um, they will make a really delicious pizza base. I've also got a couple of other ingredients that I've got here. Uh, some bay leaves. I tend to put my bay leaves in about now. So these onions, um, uh, I don't know, I hope you can see that. They're getting semi-translucent, which is, I want them to cook a little bit more, but this bay leaf, um, and I'm using dried herbs because I don't have any fresh herbs. Um, we need the, because they're dried, we want to release the essential oils from them. Um, and the best way to do that is with a bit of heat. And these are going to take a bit of punishment, as in a bit of heating, whereas a fresh herb wouldn't take as much. So if you've got fresh herbs, you would add them at the end of the, um, pretty much at the end of the sauce and just let them infuse that way when the sauce is starting to cool down. So I've got these two again to that sort of colour um, and now I'm going to add the garlic. There you go, so I'm putting all that garlic in, that's going to be really garlicky but that's how I like it. I'll see if I get away with, it with my kids and I'm sure I'll uh, be told if it's too garlicky, they won't hold back. They hold no prisoners when they come to um, critiquing my food. I'm also going to put, I've got some, um, oh sorry, I don't think I even said what that was. So that was oregano that I've just put in there, and I've just put a pinch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, um, a, a recipe together, and I'll send out my, I'll have on the bottom of this, or at the end of the video, I'll have my email address. And if you email me, I can just email you out the recipe, which will have all the amount, or roughly the amounts, because as you can see, I'm just cooking by eye at the moment. And I think that's probably the best way to cook with something like this, tomato sauce, because you're all gonna have different size onions and garlic, and you know, if you're using fresh tomatoes, they're all gonna be different. So I'm now just putting in a tiny little pinch of chili, because my young children, well, my son, Angus loves a bit of spice, but my three-year-old would probably go mad and refuse to eat if she knew it had chili in it. So I'm pretty much getting there. Um, now I'm going to add a tin tomato. Um, and as I've mentioned before, I'm not wasting anything, so I've just rinsed out the tomato, the tin of tomato, just with a bit of water. I'm just going to swirl it around and put that in too. Why not? Use it all. The more the merrier. And now I'm going to cook this for probably about 10, 10 minutes and just slowly reduce it down. So this is where I'm starting off with it. Uh, and then, as if by magic, the next shot is it going to be it reduced down.
So the next um, bit that I'm, that we're going to create now, make is um, is the base. I have these magic drawers down here, which is storing everything for me, which is really lucky. So I've got some scales, uh, just some little kitchen scales and a bowl. I think I said before, I'm going to make this with uh, what I've got, which is um, I've got some buckwheat flour here, and some, I happen to have some self-raising flour. They're the only flours that I have. If I had plain flour, that would be okay, um, because I can make my own uh self-raising flour because I've got some baking powder here which is really lucky. So uh, we start off this one. This one's a little bit more technical and this is where I would measure things out. It just makes life a bit easier. So I'm starting off with um, self-raising flour. Now this is all the self-raising flour I've got. I don't want to, well, I have no idea when I'm gonna be able to get some more self-raising flour so I'm not gonna use it all. So I'm gonna use uh, Normally, if you had a lot of self-raising flour, you'd use all self-raising flour, which for this recipe would be 350 grams. Um, for this, I'm only gonna use 250 grams of self-raising flour, and then I'm going to use, I've gone over it a little bit there, but like I said, it's all about improvisation. Um, I'm going to use 100 grams of this buckwheat flour, which uh, will add, quite an interesting texture, maybe a little more um, wholesome than most people would be after. That's fine, I'm used to it, my kids don't mind it. I make pancakes out of it. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all good with this. So because uh, the self-raising flour and the buckwheat, obviously the self-raising flour has raising agent in it, but the buckwheat flour doesn't, so I'm gonna add a little bit more raising agent to it, which is the baking powder. So I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of baking powder in there um, to kind of, you know, to, to give, give it a bit more lift. Um, so that's about a teaspoon, and that was about six grams, um, if you want to measure it out. Then I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in there, um, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil, which I'm going to measure out in gloves. So this is about one glug, two glug, three glug, four. About four glugs of um, oil. Again, that was probably about 30 mils. Now I need to add 170 mils of cold water to this. For some bizarre reason, I don't have a measuring jug in this house. I'm not quite sure why. It's a bit strange with Chef not having a measuring jug. But I know that uh, water weighs the same in grams, it equates to the same in millimetres. So if I've got 170 grams of water, that's the same as 170 millilitres of water. And I think this is about a half pint glass, so I'm going to pour all this in here, and I'm gonna pour, <laughs> pour it all over the bench as well, which is perfect. I've gone over a little bit, but I suspect that will be okay because I'll be able to um, add a bit more flour to it. I'll have to add a bit more flour now that I've done that, but that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to stir it to get the dough going. Uh, I hope you can see that in there. I've gone off shot again. Um, but so that's what it's starting to look like. At about that consistency, I'm gonna get my hands in it. So I'm just gonna give them a quick wash, um, which is something we're all pretty used to doing now, about every 25 seconds or 20 seconds. I seem to spend my whole life washing my hands, which is so necessary at the moment. Um, and get them dry. Right, so I'm going to just make sure that that work surface where I've just poured all the water all over is dry. That's really important. Um, and then I'm going to pour this out on my bench. I, I much more prefer getting my hands into the food, which is uh, so I know what the consistency is. Um, and I think that's probably gonna be cool, nice. Maybe a little bit wet. So I'll just add a bit more flour to it. I'm just going to give it a light knead and bring it all together.
Uh, so that was my very first technical hitch. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully, I've got some. I'm running two cameras that I found that were under my bed, uh, which have been there for years and years. Which I haven't used a digital camera for a long time, so the battery life isn't too good. Anyway, so this is this is the dough. This is where I got to. Uh, I'm just kneading this just to bring it all together. So to knead is really, really simple. It's just a case of bringing it over and pushing it back with the palm of your hand. Bring it over, pushing it back. So this is how you knead bread, pasta, uh, pastry, all that sort of thing. Now I don't want to overwork this. I don't want to, so when you, if you're working a dough, it means you're working the gluten into it. I don't want this to be too glutinous. So I'm not gonna work it too much. So that's about where you want it at. This is a nice dough, so it hasn't stuck to the bench at all. I haven't needed to flour it or anything like that, which I will do when I roll it out in a sec. Um, yeah, so that's a nice amount. I'll probably get, I'll roll it out quite thinly and probably get two um, bases out of that, which is perfect for my family, because then like I say, I can do two. So I'm just gonna divide it in half. Uh, and then bring these back together, as in give them a little knead. Um, there's one base. This is the second base. And then I'm going to move on to a different section of my worktop uh, and roll it out. Here we go. Okay, now, now it's time to uh, roll these out. So I'm going to get a little bit of flour. Uh, just to lightly um, dust the bench and I'm going to grab the rolling pin. Um, so dusting the bench just stops it all sticking. You don't want too much because otherwise your base of your pizza is going to be all uh, covered in flour. So rolling out is really quite easy with this one because um, it's quite a firm dough. Uh, I'm going to do round ones, so to make a round pizza base, uh, you just keep moving the base around and around to try and keep it round shape. Now obviously these aren't um, the, the yeast dough as I said before because I just don't have any yeast so I'm doing the next best thing. Um, so I'm just rolling it out, moving it round to um, keep it round, that's how you keep the round shape. Uh, and I'm going fairly thin as well, um, because these will rise up quite a bit. They're probably gonna be a little bit more biscuity than a normal pizza, and I'm sure you'll hear the kids telling you they're not as good as uh, the ones that we've bought before, or, you know, but, in this sort of situation, it's still pizza, I reckon, and it's still going to be delicious. So, next one we'll get rolling out. Uh, need a little bit of flour, because obviously it's got a bit sticky again. Um, if, if your dough is really sticky, you might want to put a bit of flour on the top, so that the rolling pin doesn't stick. Um, which is fine, absolutely fine. Just don't put too much in. It's, it's sort of this is a case where less is best. Less is best. Is that even a thing? No, it is now. So less is best uh, because you don't want to end up with loads and loads of flour on top. Um, because otherwise, it'll just be really pasty when you get that tomato sauce on. So anyway, that's that. I'll just go back to my magic drawer where I've got a couple of trays. These are probably not going to fit, but that's cool as well. So, sorry, I'm just disappearing off camera. I'm looking for my olive oil, which I have here. Um, so I'm just going to put a splash of olive oil on here, and then just work it round with a piece of uh, kitchen paper towel, just to make sure that, that um, you've got that tray covered. Although it's a non-stick tray, which is the best probably the best thing to use if you've got. If you haven't got again, because I'm keep going on about it's making best with what you've got, just use a, a normal tray and um, give it an oil, a bit of an oil like this, or if you've got some 
baking parchment, that'll be great too. Uh, put that underneath the dough, that way it'll, it's definitely not going to stick. So I think I've rolled these out a bit too big, that's cool. I'm just going to pop them in. Uh, and I'm going to just stretch them out to fit the base of this tray. So as you can see, they're quite elastic, they're pretty forgiving, even if you put a hole in it. You can just, uh, like I've just done there, you can just work them around. Now that's probably not going to fill the whole tray, but you know, I'm a hack, what can you say? Okay, here we go, next one. So I'm just going to stretch it out a bit by hand. Here we go, that's what they sell them in the uh, shops, hand stretch pizzas. Uh, oh, that one's got a really big hole, but hopefully no one will know. Once I've got it all covered up. Okay, so there's the two. And I've got a shot again, I'm just grabbing a big spoon and I'm just going to um, put the cold tomato sauce on. As you can see it's cold from the way it's steaming. Uh, I've still got the bay leaf in there. I'm going to take that out because nobody wants a mouthful of bay leaf. Um, okay, so I'm just dividing that evenly onto each pizza. I've got another bay leaf there. And then I'm going to spread it out. I find this is really therapeutic. I don't know, call me a weirdo, but I just find it really therapeutic spreading this out evenly. So we're going for a nice even spread. So the idea with pizza is you want some topping on each slice. So we're trying to make it as even as possible. Um, here we go. I don't know if you can hear my kids in the background. I think World War Three is happening in the living room. I'm not quite sure why, but I have a feeling it's about to spill out um, into the kitchen. So I might at any point have to down tools and break up World War Three. Anyway, here we go. Uh, another slight technical hitch there, uh, which is fine. Hopefully I can finish it on down to one camera now. I was trying to be really clever and use two cameras before, but uh, yeah, my cinematography skills aren't as good as I'd hoped. Anyway, so um, we're, we're nearly finished now anyway on the home straight. It's all about the cheese now. That's probably a bit too much. I'll get them trouble for using that much. Um, it's probably not that necessary. So, grated cheese, I'm sure everyone's grated cheese before. They, they sound silly and I don't want to tell you how to um, suck eggs. Is that, <laughs> is that the phrase, is that the right cooking terminology? But So when you're grating, I always it's best to put the palm of your, your, your thumb palm of your thumb, the back of your thumb towards the grater, that way if you're going to grate anything, um, it's only that section of your hand and you're not grating fingertips or anything like that, or nails, there's nothing worse than um, getting a bit of grated nail in your grated cheese. I think there probably are worse things, but it's pretty gross. Um, anyway, so here we are, plenty of cheese. The more the merrier. And like I say, yeah, I would probably normally, if I had an option, I'd be going a bit of, um, I'd be using a mozzarella and a cheddar blend, but I don't, so it's going to be fine. So again, nice, even distribution is what we're after. Both pizzas. Um, hopefully it'll Keep the walls from the door and if you've got a nice glass of red to finish it off with that my friends would be superb anyway that's about it now so i've preheated an oven which i probably should have mentioned before i've got it pretty hot i'm running my oven at about uh 200 um 
I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit so you can see where I am. There's my oven and in they go, ready for... Going to be bang on time for dinner, so it's five o'clock. Uh, these should be done in about 20 minutes, hopefully. Um, I'll call the kids in. You'll get to witness uh, whether I get slaughtered <laughs> and uh, whether I should start looking at doing a YouTube channel on something different or whether I'm a winner. And I'm hoping that it, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they'll love it. Oh, I tell you what, I've forgotten. Um, see, this is this is real life. This this cooking. I I got some um, sweet corn. Which I'm just going to quickly pop on there. I'm glad you reminded me. Thank you. See, this is what happens when you fly solo. You don't have any glamorous assistance. You, uh, oh, you tend to forget. You don't tend to forget you. Just, yeah, you don't remember. Anyway, here we go. So I think this is essentially going to be now a sweet corn pizza, but you know. Needs must and I oh, like sweet corn. Uh, we'll see if the kids do it anyway. Back in the oven again. Take two. Here we go. And the magic of hopefully of my cinematography skills. I'll have them out in a sec. So, with the magic of, I want to say uh, television, this is sure not television. This is 20 minutes later, and um, that's the finished article. Got a couple of them, they look all right. In fact, they look good. They smell much better than they look. Uh, I'm gonna call the kids in, let them judge my skills, and um, I hope they go easy on me, but we'll see. Right, let's check it out. Okay, so this, these are my two uh, biggest critics. This is Adeline. Say hello to the camera, Adeline. Wave. Hello, camera. <laughs> Angus. This is Angus. Hello. He really loves the pizza. Okay, so hopefully they love this pizza. So I'm just going to cut it up. Are you ready? Are you good? What I wanted you to say. Peace for you. Peace for you, madam. Oh, like, oh, pizza. Oh. That isn't what you meant to say. Yeah. You're not saying the right things. Exactly. That's exactly right. As you can see, it's completely unscripted. Got a fan here. Can you look up and tell them what you think? Good. <laughs> and what do you reckon? Brilliant. Brilliant, good. Do you want any hot sauce on yours? Brilliant. Oh, you just told me it was brilliant. Yeah. Pepper. Oh, okay. So what do you reckon? You think it's okay? Brilliant. You're not too sure. Brilliant. He thinks it's brilliant. Is that why you're smothering in the hot sauce? Yeah, I'm not sure that she's a fan, but anyway, that's what they thought. 